Peter Hill Explains, where I invite you to join the science teaching conversation with me about Alternative Global Positioning Satellite Systems. Uh, now, I'm just reading this, and I'm actually quite happy that my uh, cognitive rehab is improving. I'm going to just improve even more as I read. This is something you have to go over and over again. So this is a New Scientist article from this period uh, called Towers of Strength by Stephen Batsbury. The byline is, Satellite positioning systems are vital for modern life, but vulnerable to attack. There is more powerful Earth-based alternatives. Uh, is a more powerful Earth-based alternatives. As far as Logan Scott is aware, the date was 28th of September 2017, and he was at a conference centre in Portland, Oregon. But that was not the most uh, what most smartphones around him seemed to th think. Many of them were displaying a location somewhere in Europe. Others were saying it was January 2014 and refusing to send texts or emails. Fittingly, the conference was about global navigation and the problems began as Scott was presenting a talk on GPS receivers can be fooled. He borrowed a detector and tracked down the source. It turned out a GPS signal generator was used for testing had not had its terminals properly capped. The bank mistake was soon put, but a deliberate attack could be far more destructive. GPS, originally developed by the US military for defense purposes, is now used from everything from power grids to financial trading, ambulances and air traffic control. To reduce the risk of relying on it, the European Union has built its own SatNav Galileo, a system that has become a political football in the UK's negotiations to leave the Union. But perhaps backing up satellites with more satellites isn't such a stellar idea. Instead, a more down-to-earth technology with its roots in the Second World War could be enlisted to our defence. We have become used to the power of SatNav. Pull out our phone and it will give you your position in seconds. To reach uh, this nirvana of navigation, we have travelled a torturous road built by pioneers who understood how the dimension of space and time are intertwined. Time is also the heart of SatNav systems such as global positioning systems. Each of the 31 GPS satellites sends out a time signal from atomic clocks on board. A receiver on the ground can work out its own location from how long it takes the signals to arrive. GPS receivers are small and cheap and most accurate can give time to within a nanosecond and position within millimetres. Uh, this has made SatNav indispensable not just for navigation but for any system that depends on precise timing. It allows power grids to manage the interplay of supply and demand, synchronised data transfer and phones and other communication networks and timestamp financial trades. The trouble is the signal comes from more than 20,000 kilometres up and is very weak by the time it reaches us. A cheap pocket sized signal jamming device can easily overpower it. Consultant engineer David Last, who often appears as an expert witness in court cases, says um, he is seeing such devices used by criminals all the time. For instance, some high-tech car thieves use sat-nav jammers to avoid being tracked as they drive away. A more serious threat is spoofing, use of signal to overpower satellite and fool devices into giving false position and time. This is what Scott saw in Poland, albeit an accidental form, Portland. In that case, although the signal leaking out of the spoofing device was tiny, it was enough to, in effect, transport much of the conference centre to another place and time. It disabled email and text because the incorrect date took phones outside the validity of their security certificates, Scott thinks. A sophisticated spoofing attack broadcast at higher power across a whole city could cause far worse problems. That's something a technically literate terrorist would find quite straightforward, says Last. There, must, there are many other threats. A cyber attack could disrupt satellite control. The owners of satellite constellations could simply withdraw open access to their position signals. Accidental software glitches have been known to mess up signals too. An outburst of plasma from the sun can cause turmoil in the magnetic shield around the Earth, which in rare cases cause disable, uh, could disable satellites. It's possible to reduce some of these threats. We can make receivers smarter and prosecute people with jammers and spoofers. New systems such as Galileo will boost the resilience of a sat-nav overall. It could be difficult for a cyber attack to take them all out at once. Galileo users can pay for authenticated signals which are harder to spoof.
But all these defences are limited, which is why last champions are more comprehensive backup. Enter Loran, developed in the Second World War with the help of aircraft parts to find their way. The name is short for a long-range navigation and principle is similar to GPS. Mars transmit a synchronised radio signal and receiver compares the time of travel of different signals to work out its position. The most recent version of this technology, Loran C, was used uh, around the world for decades, especially by ships until the split of GPS in the 1980s. By 2004, the US government has recognised the vulnerability of GPS and called for a backup system. A few years later, the Department of Homeland Security announced it would uh, be eLoran, an enhanced Lorraine system that would uh, be in the works since mid-90s. The new version was synchronised uh, to coordinated universal time, which is needed for time stamping financial trades. It could also be made more accurate by adding differential stations, fixed receives and transmit position corrections uh, to nearby users. Even better, Eloran is very difficult to jam or spoof. The signal is tens of thousands of times stronger than GPS because the transmitters are no more than a thousand kilometres away and do not have to rely on the tiny power sources that satellites do. What's more, Eloran signals have a wavelength of uh, 3,000 metres compared to 20 centimetres of satellite navigation systems. You need a big antenna to transmit those long wavelengths effectively, just as a bassoon can produce lower, longer pitch wavelength notes than a piccolo. A jammer would be a bulky thing for criminals to handle. You'd probably call attention to yourself, says Last. The system needs road testing to show that it would be robust defence. But before it could get going, jamming uh, of a political source left the project in limbo. In 2009, the funding was unexpectedly thanks, but thanks to, quote, some minor new bureaucrats in the Office of Management and Budget, says Dana Grohl, who worked on the program in the U.S. Coast Guard and now heads the Resilient Navigation and Timing Foundation charity. In 2010, the U.S. turned off its Lorraine stations on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, the beacons still burned, uh, and the General Lighthouse authorities in the UK and Ireland soon demonstrated a prototype of Villarand system using nine old Lorraine stations across northwest Europe. One of a series of sea trials took place in March 2012. Villarand equipment was installed uh, at the port of Dover in the UK uh, on a research ship and the system was calibrated to account for the distorting effect of local land masses. The trials showed that the Lorraine was accurate and dependable enough to meet the strict requirements for coastal navigation and harbour approach, whilst positioning action was better than 10 metres. It can give the time to about 100 nanoseconds. That's less accurate than GPS, but good enough for most applications, including the timing needs of electricity grids and even high-speed financial trains. Things were looking promising, but then political politics intervened again. Some of the masks involved in the trials were in France, Norway, Germany and Denmark. But in 2015, those countries decided to turn them off. The UK government asked Norway to at least mothball their four stations, but instead the country blew them up. <laughs> According to last, this was because Galileo, having spent uh, 10 billion euros on the project, the last thing governments want to hear is about vulnerability, he says. This is what stopped E. Lorraine, or maybe just paused it. John Galmendi and Frank Lelbordono, the two US gave uh, congressmen who wanted to see a backup for GPS. So in 2017, they sponsored an amendment to the Defense Act that awarded $10 million to a demonstration project. We got real money now, says Goward. The blood is in the water. Over, the, over in the UK in 2018, a government report on SatNav vulnerabilities included recommendations that critical national infrastructure employ backup systems and government groups is now meeting to work out exactly what to do. South Korea is working on an Eloran system for shipping after claims that North Korea has jammed the GPS in the vicinity of Sh uh, Seoul Sh Harbour. Russia, Saudi Arabia and other countries looking for similar technologies too. Compared with setting uh, up new satellite constellations, getting Eloran running would be a breeze. The UK already has a transmitter at uh, Athorn in Cumbria delivering an Eloran chain. Adding two or three across Britain and Ireland would uh, let receivers there work out position too. There would be no need for new masks. Existing radio transmitters could be used. George Shaw at General Lighthouse Authority says such a system would cost less than £10 million. 
The only trouble is that one of E. Lorraine's biggest strengths could also be his biggest sweetness. The long wavelengths make compact speaking devices hard to build, but also the release, uh, receivers that would be small enough to fit in a mobile technology. Uh, uh, but so are the receivers that would be small enough to fit in mobile tone, phone technology. We're talking about a 3,000 3, meter wavelength and trying to staff it into a small antenna, says Charles Shu, CEO of Ursanaf, Urs a company that makes Lorraine receivers. This is why the firm is focusing on receivers for maritime and aviation application for the moment. The shuttle is confident that receivers will shrink and fit into portable devices like phones over time. There is another backup technology that needs uh, to trim the antenna size. A US company uh, called Satels has developed a way to deliver time of position using a system of communication satellites called Iridium. It turns out the Iridium clocks are pretty good, says Satel's um, president, Greg Gutt. The firm monitors and constantly corrects them uh, from the ground. The receivers gain information from the frequency shifts as the 66 Iridium satellites move relative to the receiver. These two tricks mean that satellite systems can provide locations to within about 20 meters and timing accurate to 100 nanoseconds. The Iridium signals are about a thousand times stronger than GPS, making them harder to jam. And spoofing signals could be very difficult because satellites cover the Earth with uh, 3,000 separate beams, each encrypted with changing keys. As the wavelengths used is small, it would also be relatively easy to put uh, receivers and phones and other mass market devices. Yet the fact that a uh, satellite system is based in space may be a pretty serious flaw. You want to be able to drive there rather than take a space shuttle to do upgrades, said Goward. But with the stakes so high, perhaps we want both satellites and Eloraine out there, ready to step in and keep us from getting lost in space and time. Podcast, another story comes to a close. It's been a pleasure sharing this moment in time with you. May you discover truly amazing things, understand them, and tell others. Thanks for listening.